So in this second module, I'm going to give you some examples, and we're going to kind of go through these examples. They're really just representative of what's out there in the scientific literature. They're also kind of examples of what not to do. And I want to start my slides with a little disclaimer. You know, I pick up snippets, sentences, paragraphs from various things I read, sometimes my students' work, sometimes uh, scientific literature. And I'm often critiquing that writing, so I tend to omit exact citations from my slides just so that it doesn't appear that I'm critiquing any particular author. Really, these uh, kinds of uh, problems in the writing are very typical of what's out there in the literature. So I just want to start with a, a sentence that I was reading in an article in the Journal of Clinical Oncology. Now this is one of the top cancer journals out there. And this was the first sentence of the introduction section. So this is where the authors are really supposed to be kind of drawing you in, drawing the reader into the writing. And it reads, adoptive cell transfer immunotherapy is based on the ex vivo selection of tumor reactive lymphocytes and their activation and numerical expression before reinfusion to the autologous tumor bearing host. So uh, I have a background in biology, which many of you may not, and, and I still find this sentence really, really hard to read. I have to really struggle to get through that. And it's kind of a shame because if your reader has to struggle to get through your uh, sentences, then they're not really going to, one, they may not finish reading your paper, and uh, two, it's going to be a lot harder for them to pick up what you have to say. Um, it's just really a, a shame for the scientific literature to, to be so difficult to read. So ask yourself the question, is the sentence easy to understand? I don't think that it is. Is the sentence enjoyable and interesting to read? Um, because it's hard and you have to struggle through it, it certainly doesn't make it enjoyable. And I really want to emphasize the point in this class that I think the scientific literature should be somewhat enjoyable and certainly should be interesting to read. Here's another fun example. This was from a paper I was reading from uh, the Journal of Photochemistry and Photobiology, which is a decent journal with a, a decent impact factor. And it was actually a really interesting article. It was about sunscreen, and it had some very uh, interesting practical applications. So I was actually trying to write about the article for the lay public. And it reads, um, these findings imply that the rates of ascorbate radical production and its recycling via dehydroascorbate reductase to replenish the ascorbate pool are equivalent at the lower irradiance, but not equivalent at higher irradiance with the rate of ascorbate radical production exceeding its recycling back to ascorbate. So you can see that this sentence is really hard to get through, and it's pretty difficult to understand. Again, even if you have a biology or chemistry background, it's difficult to understand. So you want to ask yourself, is the sentence readable? Again, I don't think it's very readable. Is the sentence written to inform or to obscure? I, I ask that question because sometimes when I'm reading the scientific literature, I almost wonder if the authors are you know, being intentionally obtuse, if they're kind of intentionally trying to obscure their material. Uh, maybe subconsciously, just as a way, because if nobody understands the writing, then they won't be able to poke holes in it, for example. So sometimes the scientific literature actually almost reads in a way that it's so obscure that you do wonder that. So we really want to write in a way that's to inform. We certainly don't want to obscure the, the uh, message. And I'm going to point out one feature that's common to both of those two passages that I just showed you. In both of those examples, they did something that's very common in academic writing. They took some nice, spunky verbs, and verbs really move the sentence along, but they turned those nice, spunky verbs into clunky nouns. And for some reason, this has become very common in academic writing, people turn lots of verbs into nouns. That makes the reading a lot harder to read because, again, verbs drive sentences along and nouns slow them down. So you can see that this first example really suffers from that issue. So we have selection, activation, expression, and reinfusion. Those are all nouns, and they're really, you know, kind of dragging this sentence down. But they could have been verbs, select, activate, express, and reinfuse. So I want you to start paying attention to that in your writing. See how often that occurs in the scientific literature. This is one of the principles we're going to be spending a lot of time on next week when uh, we have our unit on verbs. And then that second sentence suffers from the same problem. So they have production and recycling rather than produce and recycle. So in fact, I took that second sentence because, again, it was from a paper that I was really trying to understand. 
I took that second sentence and I tried to translate it. I tried to rewrite it into something readable and understandable. So here's what I came up with. It's really not the most exciting sentence ever, but you can see that at least I think it's understandable now. So it says, these findings imply that at low irradiation, ascorbate radicals are produced and recycled at the same rate, but at high irradiation, they are produced faster than they can be recycled back to ascorbate. So at least now I think you can understand the gist of what the authors were trying to say. Notice what I did here is I stripped a lot of the extra words from that sentence. Uh, I've probably got it down to about half the, uh, the size of the original uh, sentence. And then I turned those nouns, production and recycling, back into verbs, produced and recycled. Did a few other things in terms of the logic as well. So I really want to get across two themes in this course. One is that even though we're writing about science, we're writing about ideas that are complex and often technical, that doesn't mean we have to use complex language. We can get across technical and complex ideas even with simple language. And if we did that, I think that scientific writing would be a lot easier to read and perhaps it would even be enjoyable to read. And I think that's really what you want to aim for. You want to aim to write things that are easy to understand and even enjoyable for others to read. And I love this quote. I pulled this out of something that I read back in 2003 and uh, I think it's just great. The author says, my professor friend told me that in his academic world, publish or perish is really true. He doesn't care if nobody reads it or understands it as long as it's published. And uh, there's really a hint of truth to that, right? There is this pressure to publish, and uh, sometimes it may feel like you're just trying to get something published just to get it published and get it on your CV, right? Um, and that's really a shame. That obviously shouldn't be the goal of science. If nobody cares about your work and nobody reads it, then obviously it's not going to move science along at all. So when you're sitting down to write, I want you to really be paying attention to and thinking about making your reader understand your writing and uh, in doing so, making your reader care about your writing. You really want to make your reader care. If you do that, obviously uh, they're more likely to pick up on your ideas, they're more likely to cite your work, and it's more likely to move science forward. The preceding program is copyrighted by the Board of Trustees of the Leland Stanford Junior University. Please visit us at med.stanford.edu.